fluoride as well as other toxins from the drinking water that they serve their customers. You'd be surprised that it's a small percentage that really appreciate it, um, but the ones that, that do understand what fluoride does to you, they are ecstatic. They, they love seeing that. Sodium fluoride is a chemical byproduct of aluminum, phosphate, cement, steel, and nuclear weapons manufacturing. It reduces IQ, impairs memory and learning. It has shown to poison kidney function. It causes bone disease as well as reduced thyroid activity and is a proven cause of cancer. Well, not only is it bad for humans, it's also bad for uh, animals of all kinds as well. I just don't understand why fluoride needs to be in the water to begin with. I do not think it belongs no. in our water supply. I said it's for promoting like tooth health, oral hygiene and stuff like that. It's supposed to be good for your teeth. Anything in the water supply doesn't sound like something that I'd be for. So if I, if I know something's being put into a water supply that doesn't necessarily have to be there, I'd rather it not be there. Back in elementary school, they made you like gargle that stuff and like and like wash your mouth out with it. But I just remember it made me sick every time I had it. So it's like, I don't know if it needs to be in my water. I think it's just awful. I don't think anything should be added to the water supply that doesn't need to be added. And it just, it just sounds scary. Anything that's being put into a city's water supply without, without everybody's consent. So would you like to see all the restaurants turn the corner like you are and remove the fluoride from the drinking water that they serve their customers? Well, I like to, I like to see the city turn the corner and remove all the fluoride and, and, not, and not burden everyone with putting RO systems in their, in their restaurants. I think that would be the best way to do it. But I, I think that we can get the word out by doing that, and I would, lo would love to see more restaurants do that. Well, you know, a lot of advocates are, are starting to educate people, and more and more people are becoming aware of the dangers of sodium fluoride. In fact, right down the street, Hop Dotties, yep. have, they've made a conscious decision to remove the sodium fluoride from the drinking water that they serve their customers. Uh, what do you think about that? I think it's great. I actually uh, go over there quite a bit. I appreciate it, yeah. I don't want, if they can filter out anything, the more filtration of the water, the better. I think it's great that they're they're standing by something they, they believe in. It. I'd like it if a lot more businesses started to do that. They actually spent the money to to take it out of their own water supply. I think that's pretty cool. They don't need to spend money to take it out. It just needs to not be there to begin with. I'd like it personally if Austin stopped putting the fluoride in the water altogether. The majority of people we talk to on the street flat out don't approve of sodium fluoride being added to their water, which is why we applaud individual activists and activist groups like the Fluoride Action Network who stand in the way of fluoridating public water supplies. And thanks to restaurants like Hop Dotties playing a role in the health of their customers and their community. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. Alex, back to you. All right, New World Order, we're coming for you! <laughs> More news, calls, and special guests coming up after this quick break. We now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Gentlemen, we have the one, the only David Icke joining us here in just a moment. And uh, David didn't request this, but I just want to do something different. Uh, I'm going to talk to him just a four or five minutes, bring up a few topics, and then I'm going to step back. Uh, for, for most of the hour, I'm going to play Traffic Cop, but it's going to be commercial free. And then we're going to have, uh, you know, David Icke just absolutely uh, wide open. Uh, David Icke, uh, not fettered by commercials uh, or uh, Alex Jones, uh, excitedly interjecting and uh, trying to back up what he's saying. Uh, I had a good idea what David would want to get into first. And I was talking to him this morning and I said, what do you want to get into? And he said, the Jimmy Savelle sex abuse scandal. And because you know, David has researched and exposed, it's undoubtedly that it's a pedophile network at the top uh, worldwide. I mean, you saw that with Jerry Sandusky, and of course it went higher up, and we told you that a long time ago. Now that's come out. Uh, I remember John DeCamp on the show more than a decade ago saying that there was sex abuse at Penn State in the football program. And I remember shutting him down because I'd never been in the news, and I don't want to get sued. Um, and, and you've had all the cases in Europe where... Um, 
you know, they find little kids dead in dungeons, and it turns out judges and people are running it. We had the Texas Youth Commission here in Texas where they would have the judges and police go in and have sex with the little kids in the CPS and also in the juvenile halls, and that got all swept under the rug. I mean, these are really creepy people. <clears throat> I mean, beyond creepy, and this is their world. Uh, they admit the CPS here in this country seven times more likely to sexually abuse children than, than any other group, five times more likely to physically abuse them. You can look those numbers up. They put um, two-thirds of the kids plus on psychotropic drugs, seven on average. Uh, so it's, it's all about hurting the children. And they can't get away with chopping their hearts out like every other culture did. Well, they do the other thing. So we're going to tie that into former IMF head lived a life of eyes wide shut. That's what the New York Times said uh, down in underground, uh, you know, grottos in, in mass uh, sex orgies. Uh, that's just the uh, gateway to all this. I've talked to high-level Hollywood people who have been in underground caves in England uh, in, in satanic uh, orgies. And, and then, of course, it's off record. I'm not allowed to say who, but that's as a journalist. None of it was illegal, I was told about. It wasn't, it wasn't you know, it was, it, was, it was adults. But that's just the gateway uh, into all of this. Uh, we're going to be going over all of that. And I, I said I'd cover this Wednesday and then Thursday. Never did. Uh, later, we'll talk to David because he'll be with us an hour and a half graciously. Uh, meet Manza Musa. Uh, uh, the richest human being in all history, but number two are the Rothschilds. That was London Independent, and it's a big list, the 26 richest people in history. And actually a pretty accurate list from my research, so we're going to be uh, going over that and talking about Iran. Uh, Joseph Stiglitz saying Europe's in a depression. No kidding. We're being proven right there. Uh, the, you know, the stupid presidential reality show, all of it, with the one and only David Icke. Now, now, before we go to David, he's got his big event coming up. Uh, there at a, you know one of the most famous stadiums in the world, not just in Britannia or Albion, they're over in the UK. And it is so important that everyone who lives in Europe or England or great time of year to travel to England, if you're, if you're planning to go on a vacation or visit family or whatever, get to his historic event because uh, it's already getting a lot of media attention and it's important that it be big and it's important to call the media and tell them to give it attention because in 12 hours, it's going to be historic, but never fear. David is going to provide. I don't know how he's going to do this because it's killing us to give out free video streams we've got right now uh, at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. It kind of it's kind of like the snake eating itself. We're we're bringing in money, but then the, you know, putting out the free video streams to you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands that have tuned into those in the last uh, 24 hours, or it's been about 22 hours now. Uh, it's quite expensive, but he's going to offer. I think it's free to everybody a video feed, uh, and except for several months, it'll then be free. Uh, so it sounds like David is all in, and that's what we're doing. We are all in, but go to davidike.com, get your tickets, sign up, but, but call the media, spread the words, your Facebook, your Twitter, tell people about uh, the Wembley Arena, October 27th. Notice he's doing it right before Samhain or Halloween, the big globalist occult day to really try to counter their darkness. Uh, deeper in the rabbit hole than anyone has ever gone. Again, we'll put that back up on screen uh, for TV viewers. If not, if you're a radio listener, just go to... DavidIke.com, David Ike, David, D-A-V-I-D-I-C-K-E.com. And again, for us here, uh, I don't know, we've raised like $140-something thousand dollars. Uh, I think we'll probably get four hundred, five hundred thousand. dollars 500000 I, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to raise a million because I've, I've all in hiring six more reporters, building the studio. Now we need the satellite uplink, some other things. 500000 a million sounds like a lot. It's not when you're trying to do media. Some of these, you know, BBC... CNN. I've talked to people that built their sets. Some of the sets and equipment, say at CNN, are like three or four million dollars uh, just for the set. I mean, I mean to give you an idea, you know, our sets we're, we're trying to build some cost about once twenty five thousand dollars, others fifty thousand. I'm actually using a guy that built a set for CNN. He's a listener, so he's doing it at cost. That's the type of stuff we're pulling the trigger on so we can have the reporters and not just have a nightly news show, but start expanding vignettes. We've got stations and networks that all want them, little news packages that we can put free to air out. That's why it's so essential to go to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com right now and donate. But I'm going to tell you this. If you are a family struggling, do not donate to us. I've always said that. It's listeners that started five years ago. Uh, today, I guess the first money bomb demanding I do it, they started it without my consent, so I had to get behind it on the day of it and it raised $300,000. Uh, and then that money helped us move over here and, and, and kind of, well, I better spend this. I better, you know, use this to expand. You guys kind of nudged me out there. Now we've become to de really depend on it. Uh, and 
uh, here we are. And so uh, I'm telling you, though, it's for the middle class, for the business owners. You're going to end up, we're going to end up losing it all if we're not all in. And it's not all in, folks, to give us $1,000, $10,000. That's really where the donations should be coming from, because I know people got the money. The only thing flourishing are the luxury shops, the boats, the, the watches, the you know, the cars, because there's either, a, you know, upper nouveau riche or ultra rich, and then there's just all these poor people. Everything else is imploding but the luxury stuff. And, uh, you know, if all those baubles are what matters to you, then more power to you. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's time to be all in. Spread the word about the show. Uh, spread the word about the free video streams at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com so this can continue to virally spread. I want to thank all the guests that have been on, from George Norrie, uh, to Webster Tarpley. Uh, we've got Gerald Salente and Max Kaiser coming up today. Uh, I, the full list of guests is up at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. If you, if you aren't on the Internet or don't like to donate that way, you can call 888-253-3139. Uh, by the way, if you donate $100, you get one of these one-of-a-kind, uh, Liberty or Death. It was a little bit more, but I, was, I mean, they ordered quite a bit of these. I mean, not too many, but I just, I just want to get them out there. And MoneyBomb 2012, uh, Camouflage and... and, uh, and uh, Hunter Orange uh, stamp on it. People love this shirt when I wear it around town. Infowarsmoneybomb.com or 888-253-3139. You can also write to us and we'll add it into the Money Bomb a week later. P.O. Box 19549, Austin, Texas 78760. All right. Without further ado, again, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank all the guests. I want to thank David Icke. I want to tell you, go to davidicke.com and get behind what he's doing. And David, before we get into the big pedophile scandals, the war, the economy, all of that, and I'm just going to step back and you know uh, uh, maybe nudge you to cover a few of those points if you get focused on just one area. But to, uh, up front, spend a few minutes telling us about the Wembley event and 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 why it's so important. I mean, I know why it's so important, but uh, in your own words, why is it so important? Well, Alex, in in many ways, it's uh, it's where my life's been going since I started on this road. I didn't realize it was until the last year or so, but um, it's the culmination of of the work that I've done and the research that I've done up to this point. It's not the end of it. It's the start of a new era, but it's it's a culmination of nearly twenty five years of research in fifty odd countries, and uh, I wanted to get a, a large number of people together. Um, to make a statement to not just the mainstream media, but mainstream society, that something's changing. You know, I can remember um, not that long ago when the number of people that were coming to my events was in hundreds. And not long before that, it was on, the, on you know, you could be counting them on two hands. You know, I, I talked in Chicago to eight people um, and and in those uh, lonely years of the 1990s when uh, no one really wanted to know about this in, in any kind of numbers. And now, you know, thousands of people are coming to the Wembley Arena next Saturday and there'll be thousands of more watching uh, around the world. And what I'm going to do is connect an absolute massive number of dots because I, I guess, you know, what my contribution to all this over the years has been ta to take apparently unconnected people, uh, historical events, uh, modern events, uh, everything from food additives to uh, Fukushima uh, to uh, some far out stuff from mainstream society's point of view and fit the dots together because you can only see the picture as you can only see a jigsaw puzzle picture when the pieces are in place. You can see a jigsaw puzzle all over the, over the table or over the floor, and you can pick up an individual piece and it, you know, well, this is interesting, it's a nice shape, there's some nice colors, that's interesting in and of itself. But you put it together with the other pieces and the true relevance of that one piece when connected to all the others, is seen with crystal clarity. And that's uh, what I'm going to do over an event. The event's going to last 12 hours. I'm going to be talking for about nine and a half uh, with about 1,500 images and videos and there'll be music and everything. But it's the dot connecting that's vital. The first two and a half hours where I'm talking about the nature of reality, the reality that we're experiencing, is absolutely vital. Because I would suggest, I could 
uh, you know talk a bit about that in in this in this hour you've given me but it's absolutely vital to understand the nature of the reality that we're experiencing because without that we cannot even begin to understand the true nature and depth of the conspiracy and the manipulation that we are uh, being subjected to hour by hour because at the core of the core of the core of those who are at the center of these networks that are behind that they understand what the nature of reality is they understand how we interact with it they understand how we manifest our sense of perception and our sense of daily reality and if they have that knowledge and we don't or mass the human population then you know we are a piece of cake to manipulate and so all these different areas that appear completely unconnected uh, must be connected for the picture to be seen this is why science is a waste of space mainstream science because it's a series of disciplines where each discipline is focused on its own discipline often competing with other disciplines for funding and prestige and all the rest of it and they're not connecting the dots even of what they know and when you do you see a very very different world this is why and a very different explanation of the world to mainstream science this is why some uh, even mainstream scientists with a bit more of an open mind are starting to look at some of the things I've been talking about all these years uh, and realize that they do provide um, answers to apparently unanswerable great questions and great mysteries they're not mysteries they're mysteries only because the dots are not connected it's so simple and so over this nine and a half hours that I'll be speaking. I'll be strand by strand by strand putting the tapestry together and whoa, will it make, um, will it make the world look different? But also, and this is my, I can say this with confidence because I've seen it happen to so many people all around the world when they've heard this information put together, they will um, see the world with a clarity that they couldn't see before. Because the idea of the conspiracy is to keep the dots apart Keep the dots apart and then they won't see the picture. Keep the pieces in the jigsaw puzzle unconnected and they won't see the picture. And they are banking on the fact that we will never see the picture. Well, we have. It's there to be seen. And when it is, whoa, um, the world looks a very different place. David, uh, again, I'm going to turn over the rest of the hour to you and then we'll come back for part of the next hour and uh, you know, have some discussion back and forth. But absolutely, everything the globalists do is about compartmentalization and different theories and different scientific systems always are very narrow on purpose. And the modern scientific method has become nothing but a fraud uh, to actually keep people uh, cloistered on very small little reservations. And then the master globalist, uh, they absolutely are like moving at, at, at high speed compared to the general public who's frozen. And, and, and that's what I liken it to. Once you start understanding this and connecting more and more of the dots the other, or the jigsaw puzzle, it's ridiculous. Uh, absolutely ridiculous how obvious uh, all of this is. But then we have to understand the general public is, as you've said, in a trance-like medical daydream state. Uh, and uh, it's just incredible what's happening, but more and more of the awakening is happening, so they're putting more of the fear in. Uh, but wherever you'd like to start, get into connecting some of the dots, or, uh, I mean, one big dot right up front uh, is you and others, and it just keeps coming out, uh, that at the highest levels of academia, government, law enforcement, uh, uh, you name it, media, you've got a bunch of Satanist perverts, uh, pedophiles, scum, uh, devil worshippers, occultists, uh, and uh, they are running things and they walk around smiling, crazed, because the general public is in a trance. It's like we're frozen and they're these vampires walking around in real time. And, and, and then what do they think of people like you and I? Uh, I, mean, I mean, I know they're scared of us. I've seen it myself because we're not com you know, completely frozen. And, 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 and more and more, uh, I, I look at the vampires, as I call them. They are now in slow motion. And people like you and I, and I'm not bragging. It's just this is, this is what I'm perceiving. We're moving faster and faster. So uh, it's, 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 it's not just that we're now up to their speed at many levels. We're way past them. And that's why they've always wanted to freeze us is because they know we're so much much more powerful than them. Yeah, well, uh, would, would it help if I just connected a few dots and then and then 
uh, which are not usually talked about, and then come round to the the relevance to those dots of the pedophilia and the Satanism. Yes, sir, you've got the society. floor. I'm turning my mic off for 40 minutes, David Ike. All right, mate, thanks a lot. I've just, I've just dropped me a microphone, but I'm fine now. Um, okay, well, I've been on this road for nearly 25 years, and I've walked the path with an open mind. Not a naive mind, an open mind. A mind that says, I'm not going to reject something just because it sounds far out. I'm not going to reject something because it is at odds with my belief system. Uh, I am going to let the information that I come across be my guide on what I accept to be true and what I do not. And it's a blank sheet of paper. What goes on there justifies its place, but I'm not going to deny anything a place on that piece of paper just because it's different to the norms that humanity has been programmed to believe is real. And so um, I'll just put this story together um, in a, a simple this way I can in the time we have. Uh, and at the Wembley Arena, I'm going to be going into this and so much more in, in, in great detail. Okay, the first thing that I think we need to understand to understand the world is what is the world? You know, we, we're born into the world and we tend to accept uh, the world as it is when we're born into it. So, yeah, well, everyone knows that, mate. It's always been like that. Well, maybe it hasn't. And maybe you've always thought it's like that because that's the only information you've ever been given. Let's look at it. Um, Where would you get your information from, okay? You're born, yeah? You come out of the womb and you come into a family, yeah. Now, the family, your parents, have been through the same system that you're about to go through. And overwhelmingly, there are hallelujah, exceptions, but overwhelmingly they will have accepted what the system told them was real about history, about life, about reality, about all of it. Now, they're not being nasty people to you um, and telling you something they believe not to be true just because they, they don't like you. They're going to tell you in your formative years what they have been, uh, I would say, programmed to believe is real. So they're doing it because they think what they're saying is right because the system's told them it's right. You, you then go into school and you go through uh, the, the smaller schools and the bigger schools and then into college and university and through all that time at different levels are academics professors and teachers who've been through the same system and then some to, to, to get to that level in academia, and therefore they have taken on the same belief systems that the system has told them is real, be it science, be it academia, be it uh, medicine, whatever. And now through your life, your young life, they, all those people, system people, system software, are going to then tell you what you, uh, w what is right based on what they believe is right and what the curriculum has told them is right, and they have to follow the curriculum. If you accept that version of reality and you've got a good memory, you can be very good at passing exams, and the, the system will reward you then. It will say, oh, yes, here's a degree, and oh, Johnny's done ever so good at school. How, how has he done well at school? Well, he's told the system what it told him to believe, and he repeated it, and the system loves that. Yeah. What happens if you challenge the system? Well, the authority figure, the teacher, all the rest of it is, is jumping in straight away. You know, you, you, you conform in the education system because it's, it's programming you and preparing you to conform for the rest of your adult life. So where I'm going with this initially is where do we get these belief systems from that we then take on for the rest of our lives is real and then anyone like me who challenges that some, sometimes majorly challenges it, he's got to be mad or, or crazy or something. No, no. 
I've just not accepted the system's version of events. And by system, I mean religious version of events, I mean science version of events, all of it. I've let the blank sheet of paper be my guide on what I believe based on the information justifying itself there. And when you, you do that and you, 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 you uh, erase what the system's told you, and you don't let the system's version of events be a constant 24-7 sensor for anything outside of it, then the world looks a very different place and your mind can now move. It's no longer in the prison cell uh, of conformity. It's, it's moving. It's expanding. It's getting insights. It's seeing things it didn't see before. And I found it very interesting that in uh, 1984, in George Orwell's book, he made the point about history. And to summarize, he was basically saying, if you control history, you control the present. Because if you can manipulate and distort and outright lie about where we've come from, what we call history, then you are going to give people a totally distorted view of where they are because they're going to see where they are as the culmination of where we've come from. So hijacking history has been fundamentally important. You look at the detailed evidence of the background, the Rockefellers and all these people hijacked the writing of history. So that blank sheet of paper I'm talking about also has history erased from it on the basis of what the system's version of history is and history has to earn its place on the paper by evidence, by credible evidence, not by the system's version of events that we have to follow. And understanding history is fundamental to understanding where we are and what's going on and what's really behind this global conspiracy. So let me go through a, a story which I will back up with um, evidence at Wembley and in massive, massive evidence in my books. Um, first of all, we need to, like I say, understand or appreciate the basics of the reality we're experiencing, even before we can understand the, the, the historical part of it. We look in the mirror and we think that we're looking at a body and the body is us. We look around the world and we think it's, it's all very solid and all the rest of it. It's not solid. The world's not solid. You look at quantum physics and it will show you the world's not solid. It, 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 it's supposed to be made up of atoms. This is what this solid desk is supposed to be, made up of atoms. Anyone seen it inside of an atom? It has no solidity whatsoever. You know, someone rightly said that if you take um, an atom to be the size of a cathedral, then the nucleus of the atom will be about the size of a 10 cent piece. And then you've got the electrons flying around the, 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 uh, the nucleus, and there is no solidity. It's just a pocket of energy, if you like. So how can, how can the world be solid when it's made, we're told, of atoms that have no solidity. That's crazy. This is why what's happened with quantum physics, where they've shown this to be the case, that basically, the, if you look at it, the rest of mainstream science just goes on uh, 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 in its disciplines as if quantum physics doesn't exist. Well, I know, I know the world's not solid, but it, it, it's going to be a lot of problem for all our belief system in science if we, if, we, if, we don't, if we accept that it's not solid. So we'll carry on as if it is. You know, that's exactly what's happened. It's crazy. And thus, when you look deeper at it, the world is not solid. It is like, it is like I call it the cosmic internet. If you look at uh, a room, you're sitting in a room and they've got the wireless internet. Okay, where is it? You can't see it. And I tell you this, if you didn't have a computer to, to tune into that wireless internet and pull that information onto the screen as a, a reality, then people would re ridicule anyone that said, you know, in this room, you know, in this room, there's a wireless internet. It's a whole information field that, that, that can be accessed anywhere on the planet. You're mad. I can't see it. Well, 
there is a cosmic internet which is based on the same basic uh, principles and it's an energetic field and fields of information and we through the uh, human form is a biological computer are picking up and tuning in to that information field and we're bringing it in to what we call the world, the solid world. You can look at the internet on a computer screen going from website to website and website and, and things can look very, very solid. But what you're looking at is simply decoded information, nothing else. People say, um, tell me about the internet. Well, it, it's, it's, it's graphics and pictures and texts on a screen. Well, yes, it is, but only on the screen. Everywhere the else, the internet is electronic information and circuits. Only on the screen does it look like we think of the internet. Okay, tell me about television. Well, it's moving pictures on a screen. Well, yes, it is, but only on the screen. Everywhere else, it's information fields, be digital or, or, or uh, frequency fields, whatever version it is. And the only place that this world that we think is outside of us and we think is so solid, the only place it exists is on our screen, which is inside the brain, inside the genetic structure of the body. And what's happening is that we are picking up vibrational information fields. Um, the five senses, the ear, smell, touch, sight, are transforming that vibrational information into electrical information, which is then communicated to the brain, and the brain then constructs our reality based on the information, not only the information it's receiving, but how it decodes that information. Now, of course, the ear is the classic, you know, it, it, it you, it picks up sound, which is just a vibrational field. Um, it, it's turned into electrical information, goes to the brain, and only when the brain decodes that do we hear anything. Only when the, de the, the brain decodes um, information coming, if you like, in through the eyes, do we see anything. You know, in hospitals, they have uh, pain uh, treatments where they stop the signal going from the point of the pain, say in the knee or something, to the brain. And thus they don't feel pain. Why? Because we only feel pain when the brain has decoded the information transmitted to it from the, the point of the pain. You know, you can smash something on someone on the knee, but you only say ouch when the brain's decoded the information communicated to it. Now we're looking at a very, very different uh, uh, reality. And these conspirators know this system and therefore they have become expert at manipulating it. So people um, are receiving this vibrational information through the eyes, through the ears, and through touch and all the rest of it. And the brain is constructing reality. Now, what if you knew how to manipulate the brain's uh, decoding system by putting in uh, uh, belief systems. And thus you were manipulating people's brains to uh, decode the reality that you want them to decode. Not possible? Well, anyone been to a uh, a hypnotist stage show. I've been to a number in uh, my research and watch what goes on. What is happening? The hypnotist is putting a belief system into the brain mind of the stooge on the stage. The person next to them is naked when they're not. There's an elephant in the audience. They're in a band or something. And what is then happening is that that belief system, what they call a hypnotic uh, implant, then hijacks the brain's decoding system. So therefore, it decodes reality, not into the reality that is really there, the woman next to them is not naked, um, but in line with the belief system. And thus, the stadium 
on which humanity individually and collectively is mass controlled is not physically it's by imposing and manipulating the way we individually and collectively decode reality that's it now if you and there are many reasons for this of course but this is a key one if you feed young children drugs and additives in sodas and all this crap in food with the young for obvious reasons they're the generation the next generation they really want to control in this in this uh, uh, new world order then you are uh, chemically destabilizing distorting and rewiring the brain thus it is not going to decode reality in a sharp uh, way that it normally would left to its own devices it's going to do it in a distorted way it's going to do it in a way that lacks clarity that lacks insight you're turning people into zombies in effect um, by um, suppressing their true power to manifest and uh, de uh, decode reality and this is why the target is the mind this is why we've got fluoride in the water this is why they want to put um, lithium in the water this is why they, they, they are, are creating this electromagnetic soup because on um, the level beyond the, the body that we see which is just a hologram illusory solid um, are electromagnetic fields which are our, our, our other levels of our awareness other levels of our consciousness and we see the body um, and don't see the electromagnetic fields for a simple reason the human body computer can only decode into the reality we see as the conscious mind's world within a, t a pathetically narrow frequency band which scientists call visible light anything outside of that frequency band we cannot decode technology can decode some of it uh, in the in the x-ray levels of it in the uh, uh, infrared levels of it ultraviolet levels of it etc but the human uh, form can only decode within visible light thus anything outside of that is in the realms of the unseen uh, to us so we only see that level of people which is within visible light ie the body the apparent solid body but isn't but beyond that are other levels of self electromagnetic fields people call it the soul if that if, if you like it doesn't matter what the name is it's what it is and this these electromagnetic fields are part of what comes under the the term subconscious and the the electromagnetic fields are interacting with the body all the time and in and communicating with it uh, in terms of information but it comes to the conscious mind as insight as as thought as inspiration or the vast majority because of the nature of the world and the way it's structured it comes to the conscious mind as a programmed belief and people think that it's their own thoughts their own uh, insights but actually what they're doing because they understand how it works is they're putting that information in at the electromagnetic field level subconscious this is what subliminal is all about and then it's filtering through to the conscious mind as oh I've just had an idea and all the rest of it well I think this is what I and all the all, all this that goes on and therefore if we are only aware or only interested in the fact that the, the body itself exists we're missing all those other levels of self where we are being manipulated in terms of our perception um, of reality now history long time ago uh, this world was hijacked it was hijacked by entities that operate outside visible light thus we can't see them so when someone says to me these entities you talk about I've never seen one well you decode visible light don't you yeah well that's why then 
If they enter visible light, then you can see them. If they don't, you can't. Uh, simple as that. And, and when you um, look all over the ancient world and at the religions, I have to shake my head sometimes um, because they're all talking about it in their own way. So uh, a, a, a Christian might say to me, uh, this thing about entities, it's ridiculous. Well, hold on a minute. What about your demons? And then uh, a Muslim might say to me, oh, this stuff about what you're saying about entities, it's ridiculous. Oh, really? What about your jinn? What about the uh, Anunnaki from ancient uh, Mesopotamia? What about the Chittahuri, uh, the, the, that is the name given to them by the Zulus in southern Africa? What about the Archons, the name given to them by uh, the Gnostics 2,000 years ago and more? That, that ran the great library at Alexandria, which was destroyed by the Roman church to get rid of all that greater knowledge. Half a million scrolls were in that place um, around 400 AD, around that kind of period uh, and before. Um, and thus, when you again connect the dots, you realize that these different religions and uh, different ancient cultures all have different names for the same thing. Now, what are the common themes that are talked about? Well, there are many, but um, one of them is that these entities are mind parasites. They manipulate people's sense of reality by accessing and connecting to them at the electromagnetic field level. This is what we call possession. This age ancient uh, theme right up to present day of possession, possessing your mental and emotional faculties, taking you over. They don't take the body over directly because the body's operating in visible light, which is not their reality. It's not the frequency range they overwhelmingly operate on. The mind parasites, the possession takes place by locking into us at the electromagnetic field level and deeper. And through that, they take over the conscious mind's uh, perception of reality. What else do they say uh, about these entities? They say that one word sums them up. Deceivers. Deception. Um, and that they invert things. They turn things on their heads. Well, look at our society. Everything's upside down. There's a quote by a guy called My Michael Elner that I used to use years ago, which said brilliantly when you look at human society, just look at us. Everything is backwards. Everything is upside down. Doctors destroy health, lawyers destroy justice, universities destroy knowledge, governments destroy freedom, the major media destroys information, and religions destroy spirituality. Not entirely, but overwhelmingly, I would suggest, whichever one it is. And thus, um, that could not describe the kind of world that these entities are said by these various sources uh, to have uh, created better. Everything is inverted. Look at Satanism. What do they do? They invert the cross. They invert the um, five-pointed star. Um, they invert everything. This is what this whole thing is about. Inversion. Turning uh, truth on its head. And to manipulate within visible light in the world that we're interacting with, while being entities operating outside visible light, they have middle men and women operating in apparent human bodies, but actually they're hybrids between the, the entity's vibrational state and human visible light. And these bloodlines that go back to the ancient world that have now manifested as the royal families of Europe and the, the dark suit uh, professions and bloodlines that dominate banking and uh, uh, government and media and, and, and corporations. These are the middle men and women that are manipulating with invisible light on behalf of these entities. So they have a way of actually manipulating directly also. And so let's come to 
the connection then between secret societies, Satanism, and um, pedophilia. Because they all come together. And they come together with these entities. First of all, secret societies. Secret societies are obviously, uh, by their nature, fiercely compartmentalized. And that means the vast majority, even within secret societies, are clueless about what's really controlling the secret society and its direction. Uh, just down the road from me here, in this little town that I live on, this, this island just off the English coast, um, they, this, this island, it's called the Isle of Wight. My goodness me, the number of Freemasonic lodges here have had a population is a joke. It's ridiculous. Um, you go to a little place, Masonic Lodge. Next little place, Masonic Lodge. Anyway, during the summer, the one down the road from me has an open day. An open day, because they want to say we're open, you know. So I went along. They're a bit surprised to see me, but I went along. And I questioned them, uh, you know, politely and nicely about their symbols and what they meant and what their history was. Clueless about um, what the secret society they are. Have been. One, of them, one of them for 30 years is actually all about. And uh, some of them came to a, a talk I did on the Isle of Wight a few weeks later um, and uh, were, were rather taken aback when I explained what the symbols really mean. They had not a clue. Um, and therefore, even within a secret society, only a tiny few at the core of the core know the real story. And the real story is that these entities exist and that they are the force behind the scenes that is manipulating human affairs. You get to the real, um, the, the, the bigger, more exclusive secret societies, you get to people like the Jesuits and, and Opus Dei and the Knights Templar and uh, what I call Rothschild Zionism, which at its core is a secret society controlled by the Rothschilds. All the rest is detail and cover. Um, and you will... Um, have a lot more understanding and at the core total understanding of what the real force behind this is. So the secret societies are to um, keep compartmentalized from the public the real story. So then we come to Satanism. Well, what is Satanism? Satanism is worship of these entities. You know, and, and it's it's when they do human sacrifices, these entities outside of uh, visible light, but um, uh, connecting into on, on the electromagnetic field level, they are stealing and feeding off the energy of terror that these uh, that that is released in these rituals. They are systematically done and built up and built up and built up. This is why today these people are doing the same rituals they did in Babylon and, 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 and the ancient world because there's a certain sequence that creates a certain outcome. And what they want in the, the victim is absolute terror. And the entities are feeding off that energy uh, in, on an electromagnetic level as it comes, uh, as it's generated by the terror. And also, that terror um, puts an adrenaline, a particular adrenaline in the blood, and that's what the, the Satanists with invisible light, within the ritual, actually um, are drinking. And, th and this connects us into pedophilia. The energy, th these entities are feeding off human energy. When Morpheus in the Matrix um, symbolically held up the battery and said that the, the machines have turned humans into one of these, that was a profound truth in terms of what's really happening. They, are, they feed off our uh, um, energy. Now, everything has a frequency. And if you um, have a, a frequency yourself, a frequency range, you can only absorb energy in that frequency range. Otherwise, it passes through you, never the twain shall meet, just like radio stations can share the same space but not interfere with each other. And their frequency range um, resonates to the same frequency range as what I call low vibrational human emotion, fear, anxiety, hatred, 
uh, uh, terror. All these things are within that frequency range. So the more that humans can be manipulated to generate fear, anxiety, my goodness me, how, how, how many excuses are we given for it? Um, the more energy they are absorbing. But this brings us round to pedophilia, which also connects into the same thing. Because the energy these entities want more than anything else is the energy of children before puberty. You know, we see puberty as a hormonal change. And in this visible light holographic realm, it is. But actually, the hormonal change is just a, uh, a visible light level expression of a vibrational information change going on at the deeper energetic levels of, 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 of the child. And they want the child's energy before that change takes place. It's a, a particular purity to them. And thus, when we look back into history and we see this common theme of sacrificing young virgins to the gods. Young virgins were simply code for children, and the gods was code for these entities operating outside of visible light and our ability to see them, though they can enter briefly, and that's when some people have some strange experiences. And so what's happening is that the pedophiles are possessed people. They're possessed at the electromagnetic level and what is stimulated within them, and in some of these bloodlines is absolutely genetic as well, is an obsession and an addiction to sex with children. Why? Because when the person is having sex with the child, the, the, the entity, the possessing entity is using the pedophile as merely a conduit to draw off that child's energy, to draw off that child's life force. And therefore, wherever you find the possessed bloodlines of these hybrid bloodline networks that are representatives of these, ne of these entities with invisible light, you will find pedophiles galore, you will find Satanists galore, and you will find initiates of secret societies galore, normally all three, certainly with the top ones. And this is where it comes from. This is why it is, why the ratio of Satanists to the so-called upper levels of society and power is vastly greater than it is in the general population. And therefore, wherever I have researched, anywhere in the world, people in real positions of power, I have found them almost always, without almost exception, to be members of... Um, very significant secret societies, to be great numbers of them pedophiles and great numbers of them uh, to be Satanists. And, you know, these people that run Satanism, they're not guys from the street. There was a guy called David Berkowitz, um, the son of Sam Killer in New York, who, when he went to jail for it, um, started a series of correspondence with um, a Christian minister in which he, he held his hand up and said, yes, I, I did it, but I was a front for a satanic coven cult. And he said in one of his letters, Satanists are peculiar people. They aren't ignorant peasants or semi-literate natives. Rather, their ranks are filled with doctors, lawyers, businessmen, and basically highly responsible citizens. They are not a careless group or are apt to make mistakes, but they are secretive and bonded together by a common need and desire to mete out havoc on society. It was Alistair Crowley who said, I want blasphemy, murder, rape, revolution, anything bad. What comes from blasphemy, murder, rape, revolution, anything bad? Low vibrational human energy which these entities can feed off. This is why the society has been structured to, to generate that energy all the time. A war, imagine a war. Um, and and the, the energy, the, uh, the low vibrational energy that is generated from pepper bombing a city of civilians or a world war. And there was a Swiss banker who um, last year told a Russian magazine, a magazine called Noviden. He, he was talking about Satanists in banking.
And he said, these people are corrupt, sick in their minds, so sick they are full of vices, and those vices are kept under wraps on their orders. Many are into Satanism. When you go to some banks, you see these Satanistic symbols, like in the Rothschild Bank in Zurich. These people are controlled by blackmail because of the weaknesses they have. They have to follow orders or they will be exposed, they will be destroyed, um, even killed. So if we take, um, and so much more comes from this, which I'll go into in Wembley to explain the world that we're living in and why they do what they do. But if we take this situation that um, Alex mentioned earlier about this story in Britain uh, relating to a man called Jimmy Savile, for people around the world who um, will not have come across him, Jimmy Savile was said to be a national treasure in Britain. Um, he was one of the first people uh, in the late 50s, very much more into the 60s, who became one of this new genre in entertainment called a disc jockey. And uh, he, you know, in the swinging 60s in, in Britain, he would, he would play the records, he would be on the television and the radio uh, and all the rest of it. And then he um, uh, became well known for working for charities and uh, running marathons for charity and working as a porter voluntarily in hospitals and raising money for other hospitals. And then he died in 2011, given a hero's kind of funeral and all the rest of it. And then um, a few weeks ago, about two weeks ago, um, pretty much out of the blue, really, independent television uh, in Britain uh, produced a documentary uh, in which they talked to a series of uh, women who had been sexually abused by Savile um, when they were underage um, years ago. And what this did was trigger a massive uh, number of other people to come forward because at last they thought, oh, someone's going to believe me now at last. Um, and they've come forward and uh, uh, the police have said they've got something like uh, 340 leads on, on, on this whole affair. The last time I saw it, well, I can tell them this because I knew about Savile back in uh, the late 1990s. Um, they can double a number, triple it, multiply it by whatever they like before they've got anywhere near the number of victims of this guy. How I came across it was in the late 1990s, I went to um, a meeting of a few people at the House of Lords in, in London, the Houses of Parliament. A bit strange to be invited there. Anyway, I, we were in this little room. And there was two or three members of the House of Lords there and one or two other people. And I thought, thought what, am, what am I doing here? Anyway, people started discussing things. And there was a lady there that kept saying some very interesting things about Princess Diana. This is not long after she was uh, killed in Paris. We're talking probably late 1997, maybe into 98. And uh, at the end of this little meeting, I said to this lady, uh, that's very interesting what you're saying about Diana. How do you know that? And she told me that she, uh, she had a friend who uh, had been a close friend, and he acknowledged as such, I found out later in the, in the media, uh, as a, a close friend, for nine years before they fell out. And this lady at the House of Lords, who, who was not connected to the House of Lords, she was just a you know, person that was there for that meeting, uh, she said, I think she'll talk to you. So I, a few weeks later, she arrives, both of them arrive. Uh, on this island where I live and I talked to this uh, lady that she brought to see me uh, at length, got it all down on tape and uh, talked to her again at another point. And what she was telling me was the horrors that Diana went through when um, she was pulled into the royal family for no other reason than genetics to produce the air in the this because the, the 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 reason that these uh, royal and aristocratic and and major dark suit bloodlines are obsessed with genetics is because they're trying to hold by interbreeding with each other this hybrid genetic structure of these hybrids that are representing these entities with invisible light. If they start uh, breeding outside of this hybrid uh, network, then that hybrid nature is diluted very quickly. This is, this is where uh, interbreeding between royal families and interbreeding between banking families and all that stuff actually uh, comes from, the blue bloods. 
And um, anyway, um, they wanted the Spencer genes uh, from Diana and the Windsor genes to come together for various reasons, which they, they've got with this guy, uh, Prince William. Anyway, um, she told me about all this, and um, then she started telling me about um, the the pedophilia that that went on, and and Lord Mount uh, Batten's connection to many things. This guy that was killed apparently by the IRA in his boat. I would fundamentally dispute that for my own information. But anyway, uh, this whole uh, cesspit that we call the British royal family was revealed before me uh, in, in, in detail. And then, out of nowhere, this is about 98, um, she mentions this guy, Jimmy Savile, who was just a kind of disc jockey, and, and, and how close he was to the royal family, how Diana couldn't stand it, and um, how he, um, he was so close to them. And, you know, the obvious question was, why are the royal family close to this bloke? And then I was told not only about Savile and pedophilia, I was told about his necrophilia, uh, his um, addiction to sex with dead bodies. Uh, and this suddenly, whoa, here we go. Why does this guy volunteer as uh, a porter in hospitals? Well, they have mortuaries, that's why. And, and, and it's now, as a result of this television program, it's coming out that um, Savile... Um, actually was into his charities to get access to children. Well, it's something else. He was in the hospitals to get ac to access to dead people. And these people, uh, these bloodlines are beyond anyone's normal imagination of sick, I can't tell you. Think of sick and treble it, and, and you might just have uh, started on the road, but you're nowhere near yet. Absolutely. Uh, David Icke is uh, with us for another 30 minutes, maybe longer. He's getting ready for his historical uh, event uh, there in England uh, coming up the 27th, a huge event that's also going to be streamed worldwide. We're going to talk more about that before he goes. But while you've been sitting here, folks, watching... Uh, you know, David Icke sit here and speak from England. Uh, we have been putting up articles backing up what he's been saying, showing the Rothschilds with giant devil necklaces, uh, showing uh, Jimmy Savile, who is the archetypal pedophile, crazy pervert look. Uh, and then he looks just like Jerry Sandusky, this same twisted goblin like. Uh, but also a feat. It's not really feminine, is it? That insults women. Uh, and then when I've been at CPS hearings uh, battling for families, I've seen the judges when the mother cries and the, they've done nothing and they're handing the children over to you know perverts. I've seen them feed demonically. That's how I described it 15 years ago, back when I didn't even understand a lot of the stuff David Icke talks about and thought he was out in left field. I, I would describe it as vampiric feeding, the pain, uh, the tasering, the death, uh, uh, telling us torture's good. Uh, on the news, telling us secret arrest. The Army's own report admitting the Army was ordered to hire jail guards who'd been fired and that they would then rape the children in front of their parents. I mean, this is what came out. This is what went on in Abu Ghraib with battery acid. I can't even say it on air. They would take large objects, put acid on it, and then and then torture three and four and five year old children. And and then of course the the videos were swapped around Congress. They called it an investigation. And Bush reportedly would, would spend quite a bit of time. It came out the White House had files of the torture. And and, and so they're just mainlining this. And it, it's true. I mean, whether it, it is entities or not, they might as well be demons. The you know the 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 the, the three and four dimensional electrochemical map the brain is creating well i mean you know that is a demonic entity one way or another these are demons and then i remember you talking about this you've gone and had rallies in london you've gone to scotland you've gone to other areas where they're arresting people that are exposing this and i mean it's come out in every city in every major town because they're not all powerful uh that you know little kids dead in dungeons uh you know all over europe uh, 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 prostitutes being found dead in dungeons. It comes out and nobody gets in trouble. The Texas Youth Commission was caught literally, quote, with police and judges and, and, and bankers pulling up to the CPS facilities. The Texas Rangers tried to stop them. They shut them down and even removed the head of the DPS because he wasn't going along with them a few years ago. And then they had the commission people come in and they basically looked like a bunch of Jimmy Savelle's 
and just whitewash it and no one got in trouble. And it was gladiatorial battles with, you know, 10 and 12 and 13 year old kids. In some cases, they were dying. It was mass raping. It was judges going and saying, I want this one. I want that one out of the uh, cells. Uh, and, and, and I've literally sat there and walked into a, a, a hospital room where a mother has just had a child and the cop was choking the woman, making her sign papers. And it, it, it totally blew me away. Mike Hansen saw this as well. I mean, and, and the average person doesn't know or when they come and get you, I'm now ranting here, when they come for you, your neighbor's not going to care and is just going to stand down. Well, that's the authorities. And it's a worldwide network. Every culture gets taken over by them. I don't care if it was ancient Asian cultures, Mesoamerican, Babylonian, uh, Roman. Uh, the Greeks had human sacrifice, uh, you know, throwing babies into the, and virgins in, that just means young women, into the volcano god uh, on the big island in Hawaii. Every culture sacrifices children. And, and the Druids, all of them, and we have a child torturing, raping, murdering guild in control. And yes, demons are driving them. And, and people say, oh, David Icke, he's so kooky saying this. That's what every culture says. They're saying you're wrong, and they're so upset by you, David, because you are obviously on to something. But I mean, I, I, I mean, I know off record you talked about this, and you talked about people entertainment and people at BBC are pedophiles. You know, and, and you've had rallies exposing it, and now it's all coming out, and it's in the news that this guy hung out with the royals. And let's put his image up. I mean, talk about a demon, and, and then I'll put back up Jerry Sandusky with his little fangs. Uh, David, just amazing. Uh, uh, I mean, I've had my little rant there after 40 minutes sitting back and listening to you. Please comment on what I'm saying and where they're going. I mean, as you said, the whole world is designed and it looks like it's upside down from those of us that have love and compassion and honor and duty and, you know, love good things. That's ugly to them. They, that's why the most popular art is dead babies. I see beautiful women all over Austin now with zombie dead baby tattoos as the coolest thing. And the New York Times admits that the most popular art for two decades running with the rich stockbrokers and bankers is, you know, $35 million for a crystal skull with semen all over it. I hate to say things like this or... Or Schwarzenegger goes to Germany and buys photos of dead babies and little girls dressed up in Nazi outfits. We've actually shown these photos on air. And, 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 and they were describing in one article how the rich buy this and they say, well, it's an offering to something so beautiful. They're saying, we're putting a premium on a crucifix and a bucket of urine. We're putting a premium on, 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 on cans of elephant dung. I mean, it's about worshiping the ugliness, uh, David Icke. Yes, it is. And when you um, look at what is said about these um, um, entities, they have no creative imagination. They do not have creativity. They're like robotic. And this stuff with um, transhumanism and putting technology into bodies to upgrade them, humans, is all about making us more like them. It's about control. Yeah, and, be, uh, and also making us more like them by taking away what we have that they don't have, which is this creativity. I mean, all this stuff that, that is fed to children and, and adults in the food and the, and the water is all suppressing creativity. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, anything that is uh, an expression of them, um, an expression of those that are possessed by them, will be by definition ugly. It's interesting too, Alex, you know, that I, I've been saying for years and years and years, way back into the 1990s, that um, these bloodlines uh, drink the blood of children and vampire the energy of children because it rejuvenates them. And this is why so many of them live so long. It's, uh, the, also, they get treatment we don't get in general population. But uh, the, this is a big part of why some of these people, a lot of these people live so long. I mean, look, Queen Mother, 102. Queen, currently 86. Prince Philip, currently 91. David Rockefeller, 97. Father George Bush, 88. Henry Kissinger, 89. And uh, there's a story um, that I saw this very day where researchers are, are saying that in experiments on mice, they found that older uh, mice are rejuvenated by being infused with blood from uh, ch uh, uh, young mice. Vampires, uh, vampire mice. Yeah, so that, what, they're, what uh, they're doing, and now so many things have happened actually in the last 10 days. By the way, I put a, a photo of, of, of Jimmy Savelle on. He literally looks like Emperor Palpatine. He is the textbook demon Nosferatu goblin creature.
Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so what what they're um, what they're saying here is is ab absolutely right. They don't realise the significance of it. But if you do, uh, these people do drink the, the the blood of children, and 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 it, it reinvigorates them. It gives them uh, the life force of, of of youth, which which gives them uh, uh, longer lives. But you mentioned Savile there, and there's a big important point here. Um, Alex, what is happening um, at the moment uh, in Britain, and it's all in the media, I mean, it's everywhere here, Jimmy Savile, and uh, all the stuff coming out, uh, but it's basically being held at the level that here was a stunningly uh, widespread paedophile over decades and all over the country. And it's being kept to a, overwhelmingly to the fact he's a, he's a, a famous paedophile that's been exposed. The, the, the biggest story behind that is, is not being focused on, although I'm doing my best to, to get it out there. And that is that he was a procurer of children for rich and famous people. Um, so was Sandusky. That's now being confirmed. I mean, and again, he ran a giant... Uh, a program helping at-risk kids. That's kids they'd already drugged up and stuff. Now, now they're saying in our news they want to drug all children with Ritalin and Prozac. It, it, they're going to improve us. And it shows kids with huge zombie eyes, you know, in huge black circles saying this is wonderful. And institution, let's institutionalize everyone. Let's just, I mean, it, it's just, oh, and let's have weirdos like Sandusky ruling over us. I mean, you can look at Sandusky. You can look at Savelle. These are their bodies are manifesting the demonic entity, the, 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 the parasite entity that's literally attached to their cerebellum. Yeah, the thing is, um, anyone that's kind of new to this or has been even though has been following the whole conspiracy thing for a long time. When you when we appreciate this situation that we've been talking about, then we can appreciate the two things. One that these are the mentalities that are put in positions of power in the agencies, be it the, uh, the, uh, the EPA, the Agriculture uh, Department, uh, 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 Food and Drug Administration, in the TSA, and all these agencies of government and government itself and, and in the, 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 the military and, and, and in all these institutions of control. These are the, the, the mentalities that are put there. And now when you see what they actually are get up to um, outside of the public eye, this is why they have no compassion for the consequences for children and innocent people of the drone bombing in Pakistan and elsewhere, of pepper bombing Baghdad and Tripoli, of, of putting uh, stuff in the food and, and, and drink that they know is going gonna, is gonna to give people massive health problems, of putting people away for the rest of their lives for crimes they didn't commit just to cover up the people that did commit them. They have no compassion. They have no empathy. This is what we're dealing with, ladies and gentlemen, and we need to grow up fast and realize that because we're not dealing with even greedy humans. We're not even dealing with unpleasant humans. We are dealing with pure, undiluted evil that has no compassion has no empathy by the way look at the royal family look at savelle look at all of them they all dress in 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 black and red and like big crest and things and then i uh, um I remember Fritz Springmeier was one of the first to talk about it, and, and then and then I saw it in the news, and then of course you've talked about it, and now it's just admitted that Prince Charles hangs out most of the time now in Transylvania and literally creeps around in the forest in Dracul castles, and and they admit, oh, we're not even German, we're really Dracul, which is even an older line out of the east, and 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 then they're prancing around, hanging around. Look, look at Jimmy Savelle. Put this image up of him with like some vampiric crest around his neck with red red shades on, and, and then next to Sandusky. I mean, they are. These are Nosferatu. These are undead. That That is what they are. I've been around them. I've been at the CPS courts, and I'm a strong man fighting for these families, but I literally couldn't do it anymore because I was watching them suck the energy out of the crying families. The more innocent, the better. And when the cops drag a little kid away, they're just, they're feeding. And it's not the average cop. They have special... Pervert cops that that have the same giggly pig faces, the little goblin faces of Sandusky and stuff. It's like a vicious hate, but also a weakness. You know what I'm talking about, David? Yeah, the thing that you just mentioned, Prince Charles and uh, Vlad Dracul and the family from whom uh, Bram Stoker uh, gleaned his uh, Dracula. Draco, dragon, Dracul.
Exactly, and and th it was all related to reptilian imagery, and um, uh, they were members of uh, an elite order going back to ancient Egypt, probably further, called the Order of the Dragon, its short name anyway. And the, this is a, the, some, a point I made earlier, uh, if you remember, about I, I talked about uh, entities possessing these uh, pedophiles, uh, and I also mentioned about the fact that in many cases it was genetic as well. The uh, attraction, the desire uh, for sex with children was genetic. Well, it is because, you see, these particular hybrid bloodlines have a different information field to the rest of the population. They're not the same. And thus, it is absolutely in line with what I've been saying all these years, that the British royal family should be genetically related to the, to the Dracos in, uh, in uh, Romania. I mean, you know, this is where, where it is. I mean, Mary of Tech the grandmother of the present queen was d directly related to the sister, one of the Draco sisters. And, and, and so... Wait a minute, it came out uh, even in the Daily Mail last year that e just in the last hundred years, the royals were eating body parts of people and, uh, and, and they have the groom of the stool that saves in these underground things all of their excrement that is basically worshipped. I mean, that's what they built, giant palaces under them, people worshipping their crap. If people, and they're going to, they're going to, but if people, when people realize who the British royal family really are, who the Bush family really are, uh, who the Rockefellers really are, who the um, Rothschilds really are, and all these people, they, they are going to be beyond shocked. But g going on for the, the Savile story, um, the procurer of children part of his um, whole uh, deal is very, very important because around the media uh, and, and people in general in Britain at the moment, they're saying, how come it, 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 there were people reporting him to the police and nothing was done? How come that the, he, he worked at the BBC all those years and, and, and people uh, in, in management who, who, who were given uh, rumours about him and, and what have you and what he was doing on BBC premises, by the way, some of it, um, but, but he, he, he was left alone. Um, the, uh, it's um, because... Uh, as he said uh, in various um, newspaper interviews and television interviews over the years, I'm untouchable. I can do anything I want. Nothing can stop me doing what I want. Why? Because these procurers of children, they go two ways. One, they procure children and they're safe. They're not going to talk uh, out and, 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 and reveal what's going on. They are left alone. The others, who they appear at some point to these people not to be safe. Maybe this guy might blab. Well, they disappear and they're no longer with us. But the Savills know how to play the game. And he said in an interview with uh, Esquire magazine, he was talking about the royal family and, and, and why he was so close to the royal family. And he said, the thing is, I get things done and I work deep cover. I've known the royal family for a million years, he said. So once you've got these rings and you've got the procurer, then his back is the back of the rich and famous. So um, they put these people into the judiciary, into, into law, into law enforcement, into uh, uh, media ownership, into banking, into government, and therefore everyone watches everyone's backs. And that's why Savile got away with it so long, not because he was just a pedophile, but because he was procuring people for uh, children, for um, uh, these uh, rich and famous people who were watching his back for him. And I mentioned another guy, Alex, um, in a book called The Biggest Secret. The first edition came out in 1998. And his, his name was Edward Heath. He was Prime Minister of Britain from 1970 to 74. And I named him in that book as a Satanist, a child killer, and, and a pedophile. This man was beyond... Uh, beyond and let me just stop you. I know we'd privately you, you know, talked about some of this, and I've read a lot of your books, but had you already named Savelle before this came out? I'd na I've named him to, to, to people I spoke to, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I've named him to a lot of people. Because I remember once during a break we were talking, and you're like, Alex, this is real. I'm going to be protesting. I'm going from memory of like four, three or four years ago when you were protesting around the country. And he's like, the children show people and, and this guy and that. And, and I remember you saying it, and I'm like, okay, well, don't say any names that aren't out yet because, you, know, you know, they could sue us. Uh, but, I, wow, I mean, I, I distinctly remember you talking about him. That blows me away.
Yeah, I've I, I've been uh, talking about him since since I was told about it uh, in 1998 to anyone anyone that would listen. But but of course it was like Jimmy Savile, he would never do that. Please, here we go. But the point about Edward Heath, don't worry about him. He died in 2005. But um, I named him um, seven years before he died. No, you know? no, you named it in the book, and he didn't even come after you. He didn't. But what's interesting is. The, the, the connections are now starting to be made between Jimmy Savile and um, Edward Heath because of Savile providing children for Edward Heath. And there's another connection, which is this uh, children's home in the Channel Islands on Jersey, which is only nine miles by five, um, which, which, um, which came out um, a few years ago. And some genuine policemen were on the case and they got kicked off because they were getting co too close to the big names involved. Same with the, uh, the genuine police that started off investigating the Mark Dutro child murder and pedophile case in uh, in Belgium that was getting too close. They got rid of him as well. And th this is the this is this is the, the the way it goes. You see, first of all, you've got these bloodlines that are addicted to sex with children for the reasons I've talked about. They then need procurers of children to provide an endless line of children for them, and the procurers need children. And this is why these networks invariably um, are always seeking and often succeed in hijacking and taking over children's homes all over the country and all over the world. Of course, the boys' town in Nebraska is a classic example of um, a place where so much of this stuff uh, has been reported to go on, uh, well, people like John W. DeCamp. Uh, but the, the situation in Jersey at the children's home, we had... Um, Heath and people like Louis uh, Lord Mountbatten um, connected by some researchers to a, a scandal at a, ch a boy's home in a uh, called Kinkora in Belfast. We had the same in uh, a series of North Wales children's homes. But what happens is when it comes out, they put the, the, the safe people in to, quote, investigate it. And of course, they might get a few of the small fry, um, but never, never, never the, the, the big people. And where this uh, Alex then comes in to the bigger uh, picture of the political uh, direction of the world is this, um, and, and he's a wonderful example. Here you have a Satanist, a pedophile, and a serial, and I mean serial child killer, and he was the man, more than anyone else, through his political career, which goes way back into the 50s, 60s, who um, orchestrated Britain's entry into what is now the European Union. It was him as Prime Minister in 1972-73 that signed Britain into this now fascist organization, the European Union. Because, you see, he may have well done it because he was one of them and agreed with it. That may well have been the case with Heath. But once you've got these people, these pedophiles, in positions of power, and you in the shadows uh, are uh, know that because you're involved with it, well... Mr. Heath or Mr. Whoever, this is going to be your policy on uh, foreign affairs. This is your, going to be your policy on finance, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, you don't fancy that. Oh, well, I've got a list of those children. This is how it works. Blackmail as a result of all this, which brings about this new world order by people pushing it on through political legislation because of the consequences of not pushing it on for them, is massively important in the way that this whole thing is orchestrated globally. Wow, David Icke is our guest, and this has been an incredibly powerful interview. I know he's got to go in about 15 minutes or so. It might twist his arm, but he's got a big day with media uh, getting ready for his huge event. Uh, I just want to pause and talk about uh, your event again for listeners that are joining us as part of this 48-hour fundraising event we're doing at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. I'd like to thank everyone that has been donating, whether it's $5 or $1,000. 100% of the Money Bomb money will go directly towards the satellite uplink, some expensive equipment we need. This will allow us uh, just in the next six months or so to start getting the uplinks uh, in place dialing them in, you have to choose them just right to decide wh where you want to hit, free to air, uh, so many other systems that we're putting in. It, it, it's all technical and complex, but the point is, I am all in in this fight against the globalists because it's a fact that Sandusky did all that, and it's come out that he was supplying them to other people through an at-risk children's program. And it is a fact that 
uh, I have battled these globalists, and it, you know, you know, when you're walking down the street, if somebody looks creepy and acts creepy, and something's wrong with them, and when you get around globalists, when you get around groups of them, when I infiltrated Bohemian Grove or when I've gone and confronted them, they all revel in their ugliness and revel in the fact that 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 they love a degenerate, gross stuff. That those of us that just like a nice, you know, sunrise, beautiful trees, the ocean. I never get sick of it. I never get sick of, uh, you know, breakfast tacos, you know, just the simple pleasures. Got one right here. I mean, I just never get sick of my wife. I just never get sick of just the normal good stuff. And other stuff is just creepy and gross to me. You know, it's kind of like I don't like porta potties. You know, I, I'm, and, and it's not like I'm a wimp, but. You know, I'll I'll wait till I get home, and I don't I don't mean to get gross here. Before I'll use a porta potty because it's just so disgusting. Uh, and 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 then the opposite; these people are all into that. And I see the globalists, uh, you know, like beyond porta potties. In fact, we can put them up on screen. Uh, the Savelle, and right next to him, we've got Jerry Sandusky. Uh, we'll punch that up uh, there in the uh, feed right there. I mean, these are yeah, yeah the feed right there. Thank you. Uh, these are really horrible, sick people. And look at the world they're building. Look at TV, which they now admit is Defense Department controlled here. Same thing in Europe, where they want anti-family, anti-beauty, uh, degeneracy. HBO has shows in prime time showing four-year-old girls uh, performing fellatio on giant sex toys. And they, uh, so, so what they're doing is they're just getting us used to it in our face. They teach five-year-old sex education. It's not real sex education when five-year-olds are totally innocent. This is an empire of demons, and, and they really want to just kill the kids. It's just that they, they can't get away with that, so they want to torture them and hurt them. And we've got to stand up against these vampires, and, and, and there's no doubt that these are demons. And David, it's all coming to a head, and you know, it's just so great to have you on here. You've got you know, the big event coming up, davidike.com. It's the 27th, uh, and I, I want you to talk about that. But for listeners, this is the one of the only places where you're going to hear people like David Ike and so many others that have the will uh, to tell the truth and expose this evil. And it's so important to spread the word about InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. It is so important to buy the books, to buy the propure water filters and get them discounted at InfoWarsStore.com. That's a donation, too. Plus, it's something you need. It's so important to, 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 to take action because all money is is a symbol of energy. And the globalists control us through the money. But when you willfully give it to good causes, and there's not really many true ones out there, so much of it's controlled, then it literally can move mountains. So again, uh, InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or 888-253-3139. We like to call and talk to folks and donate here at, uh, you know, to people directly inside the office. 888-253-3139. You can get PrisonPlanet.tv subscriptions for $5.95 a month. That's really six memberships uh, for the price of one. We need to point that out. You can use the username and passcode, six different people simultaneously. My book, Paul Watson's book, you know, 16, 17 years of material, up there nine and a half years, PrisonPlanet.tv. The free video streams at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com right now. Twitter that out. Facebook that out. Tell your friends. Tell your family. You know, I tweeted an hour ago that, you know, or more that David Icke was on with us. Uh, but, but, but David, before we get into the geopolitical, the economic, where the world's going, now that we've covered it at the heart, who these people are, and I'm glad you went there because that's what I was actually planning to bring up with you. It's amazing how we're almost always on the same page. Uh, David, I, I mean, I have good discernment. My heart knows you're a real pure guy who really believes in what he's saying. And even if I don't agree with everything you're breaking down, it's because it's my own perspective uh, I just really know that 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 you are wreaking havoc against these people, and doing that through love and through enlightenment and and unlocking minds. And I tell you, if I wasn't holding down the fort here with 51 crew members and everything I'm doing, I would come over to England and be part of your big event. It's going to be so historical. Tell people about that. And again, if they can't make it, there'll be video streams at davidike.com. I plan to link to them at infowars.com. Yeah, the, the the what I've talked about, um, and I've been on now for just over uh, what, about an hour and a half, just about. I scratched the surface. I mean, I mean, it's massive stuff, but there is so many dots to connect, which brings this whole world that we daily experience into crystal clarity. And uh, I'll be doing that over nine and a half uh, hours. And I, I had to smile, Alex. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm 
part of what I'm going to be doing in that nine and a half hours is um, talking about the, the whole Satanism thing and how that fits in and, um, you know, the real meaning of things like Halloween and what goes on there. And, you know, it's not trick or, trick or treat. And, you know, that's another thing that they're doing is they're, they're bringing people into the Halloween thing. Oh, it's lovely trick or treat. What a laugh. It's for kids. And actually they're drawing you into an energy field, which is, I mean, so many kids worldwide are sacrificed in that period because they have certain periods of the year where they, they really go for it. Halloween and, and Beltane across May the 1st is another one. Um, and, and I'm going to be talking about the need to let go of fear. And I'm talking all day on Saturday, the 27th of October, and the following night on the same stage at the Wembley Arena um, is Alice Cooper with his Halloween Night of Fear show. As, um, as Morpheus said in The Matrix, fate, it seems, is not without a sense of irony. Um, and, and what the... Um, what the Alice Coopers, well, maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't know. I've never met the guy. But, but what a lot of these people don't realize when they go into this stuff is, is actually what they're playing with and what they are turning into entertainment. If, if the, the real stuff behind um, all the you know, Halloween trick-or-treat and all the rest of it is so grotesque, words uh, have no meaning. And... and you know, what I'm seeing, uh, I mean, I, you know, personally, you know, all this um, Harry Potter stuff, remember one of the Harry Potter uh, movies, books was called um, The Half-Blood Prince. Um, I mean, this is, it's all in there, you know, Slithering House and all this business. And it's, kids have, have been ma being massively prepared. Um, uh, there's, uh, well, you have it in America, but the, the, there's, there's something um, called Twilight, which has been very big in Britain. That's uh, about a sexy vampire, you know, well, yeah, let's, vampires are okay and all the rest of it. Because the whole vampire story is based on reality. You know, you, you look at uh, Dracula. He, he's Count Dracula. He's, uh, um, he, he's a, a, an aristocratic uh, a, a bloodline. He drinks blood. Um, he, he only goes out at, uh, at, at night. And, and, and some of these entities have a real problem with uh, the, the um, earth atmosphere, particularly sunlight. Um, and uh, so all these things uh, that are apparent stories and made up stories, they're based on fact. So much of it is. Earlier, I was showing mainstream news with Prince Charles at the original Dracula castle that he's trying to, quote, save and rebuild properly and how he just sneaks around the area now and how much he loves it and how he's proud to be related to Dracula and, and 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 makes little jokes about it. I mean, look at him. He's a big, disgusting goblin who, on record, uh, used to you know hang out with uh, Mr. Seville. I mean, it, it's just there's no end to these people. They were very good friends. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh, yes, uh, him and Prince Charles. In fact, it's 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 actually come out. In fact, Savile said it himself. This is how close Savile was to the royal family, uh, Alex. He was brought in as an intermediary to try to find some agreement between Diana and Charles before their marriage broke up. The guy's a disc jockey. What's going on? You know, you don't get in to that level of the royal family unless you're into what they're into. Interesting. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. Well, it just came out. They're finding all the time they find dead bodies on different pieces of land, dead kids, you name it. I mean, and, and it, but it's always just in the back of the news now. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. Um, that uh, Savile said in his own words that the man that brought um, him into the royal family was Lord Louis Mountbatten, who, uh, you know, I mean, we're talking pedophilia again. Um, and, and so it, it all kind of um, fits. And, you know, that guy, um, Thomas Hamilton, who, who shot all the, uh, the children at the Dunblane School in Scotland. Yeah, that was a big a pedo scandal. He was a pedophile, and he was a, another procurer of children for the rich and famous. This is why when they had the government cover-up, widely called an inquiry into Dunblane, that the person running it insisted that certain documents relating to the case were put uh, sealed away for a hundred years. And he said, oh, it's to protect the children. No, it's not. It's to protect the establishment, mate. Um, I cannot, after nearly 25 years of this, I cannot express to people and stress to people uh, more powerfully that Satanism, pedophilia is absolutely 
two of the and they're into they're interconnected anyway different expressions of the same thing in so many ways they are in so many ways the cement along with some other things that hold the whole deal together well, well, David, we know you've got to go very, very soon here. I mean, tell me if you've got to go. If, if not, we'll keep you a little bit more because I really want to get uh, your take on you know, the uh, Nobel Prize winning economist going, yeah, it's a global depression based around Europe. Uh, the aircraft carriers lining up around Iran for the first time they've taken press TV now off the Iranian TV in Europe. I see that as a big sign. There's been a lot of saber rattling before. Uh, TSA, uh, even top psychologists say this is this is pedophile training where they now take your little two-year-old away. Now they take them to the private room and take their diapers off. Uh, they have all these TV stars and people getting upset, you know, when they actually go in their pants. But now Ben Affleck, who flies on private jets, said, quote, I think it's great they're grabbing people's, uh, you, you know, D-I-C-K's. I mean, it's, it's all about just we're going to touch you. We're going to take you away. We're going to line you up. We're going to come in your house. We're going to watch you on camera. Yeah, we're dialing in on your iPhones and watch you in your house. Yeah, the government issued laptops. The school kids are watching you. Big deal. Yeah, the NSA is watching you. Yeah, we're torturing people. Yeah, we're putting GMO on your food. Yeah, we're forcibly shooting kids up at schools all over the country, even though it's illegal to give people shots without parental consent. Yeah, we're just going to do it. And you know what? There are army manuals that say re-education camp. And you know what? It's all, I mean, they're just like going, yeah. Yeah, you think you're going to wake up? Oh, yeah. And, and, and I think they just want to just bring it all out in the open now. Why is that? Is that because of weakness or strength, David Icke? Well, just very quickly, you know, given what we've been talking about uh, today, um, you know, one major aspect of the full body scanners um, and the, the invasive pat downs of children is just making it the norm um, and getting kids and parents used to it. And, you know, for me, I don't care if people don't like it. They'll just have to do the other thing. Letting your child go through a full body scanner and be radiated as well as having a picture of them naked is child abuse, right? It is. And, and we, we've, I've said many times on this show, Alex, they keep um, uh, pushing the, um, the cutting edge forward of their agenda. And if there's not enough resistance, they just push it some more. We've got to start saying no and mean it. Uh, but David, it's worse than that. And I want you to finish your point. But... You know, when I fly, I'll go through when, when, when we're there early for the plane or when it's delayed. And I will sit there at the back of the checkpoint after I've gone through. I'll get a cup of coffee. There's always a coffee place right there. And I've done this in California. I've done it in New York. I've done it in uh, Chicago. I've done it all over. And I will sit there making sure each time that this couldn't be true. But it is every time. Uh, and I sit back with the guys and I go, watch this. In most cases, they don't even search men. They, 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 you can tell by their body language, they're Jerry Sanduskys. They look just like Savell and Sandusky. And you can tell the women that like women, and you can tell the men that like kids. You can tell the types. And, and we'll sit there and go, all right, you see that hot blonde? He likes women. Watch him. See his posture? He thinks he's, yeah, he's going to go. He's going to get her. And there'll be like 50 people go, he's got her. He's got her. And they'll literally drag him into the scanner, then do the pat down on top of it. It's not just like they do the rape down, you know, only if you say no to the scanner. And it's all about you put your hands up. You know, you're a prisoner. You know, you go through these motions. They yell at you. And, and like spiders, they grab whatever they want, and they they love it. Though when they get like a four year old kid that's scared, and they tell the parents stand back, and they take them to this the, you know the separate containment zone. Now they take you in the room. The Breitbart editor and radio host uh, uh, earlier this week, she put the video out. She said, "I don't want to go in the private room." And they said, "You're going," and they just took their time and kept rubbing on her genitalia over and over. Uh, and, and, and it shows the door shut. She goes, I don't want to go in there. And they're like, you will go in there. So now they're setting up little highway checkpoints where they're going to take you into these rooms. And this is the mainlining of pedophilia and of rape and of abuse. I mean, this is rituals. The TSA is a ritual of enslavement, a ritual. Now they say freeze. Now, once you've gone through the checkpoint, they sit there and check your drink. But here's what I'm saying. I have sat there and watched them do the scanner, do the thing, and it's women and children, women and children, women and children. There's something, a man's energy, especially when they know the men are mad, they don't like that. It's the fact that they love it, the domination. And these are literally many of them ghouls who just like the domination. I mean, this is hell on earth that is beginning here right in front of us. I'm sorry, David, go ahead. Yes, and, and you know, 
if we think it's bad now, well, this ain't where they, they want to end it. This is just a stepping stone to where they want to go. So therefore, people, we either draw a line now or we stop complaining, you know, because this is uh, just the start of it in many ways. It's the start of it out in the open. Now, why is it out in the open? Well, it, it could well be because they're now reaching a point of um, imposing this stuff that it can almost not be anything but out in the open. See, when you want to bring in a transformed society where certain things are norm, are the norm and accepted, then you have to reach the point where you start doing them as a norm. And, and, and it, it's <clears throat> the point that we're at now. I mean, <clears throat> just roll the tape back 20 years, even less, and ask yourself, would you ever have thought that your child would go through a radiation scanner, which is particularly bad for children, um, and have a full body naked picture of them or, or, or be um, sexually abused by someone in uniform in front of your eyes. Uh, I mean, w would, would anyone have believed that? No way. No, that had never happened. I tell you when what. When you were saying the TV presenters and people were you're secretly bringing children to the royals, people thought you were crazy. I remember reading one of your books and reading that and going, this is too much, but no one sued you. And now it's just all coming out. It's just, it's horrible. And you say they're in there murdering kids too, and in which they're always finding dead bodies of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the number of children worldwide that get uh, 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 murdered uh, is unbelievable. Uh, I, I was approached by um, a lady, an American lady, funnily enough, um, who um, had read in my book about Ted Heath. And she gave me a very, very detailed account of her experience of Ted Heath um, some years ago when she was a kid. She said her father was a very close friend of Ted Heath and that's the only reason she survived. Because what Heath used to do, and this is not only her that uh, uh, told me this, he would sit behind at a particular place in a particular building, he would sit behind a desk um, and he would have a ledger book, you know, like a book where, you know, Scrooge is writing down his, his money and all the rest of it. The little child would come in, that child would be weighed, would have his height taken, um, all different things about him would be written down, including his name and background, and then Heath would kill him. Um, and Heath's preference was slitting their throats. Um, and this man, Alex, became Prime Minister of the United uh, Kingdom and very, very influential even outside of that period of four years. And, you know, I've named Father George Bush for tw uh, 15 years. I've named him on the BBC. I've named him on radio shows all over, the, all over America. I've named, I've named him in my books. This man is a serial pedophile and child killer. And he was president of the United States and he actually had three terms, two of them officially to Reagan. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what is running our world and it's time we took it back. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's so obvious looking at this Jimmy Savelle uh, articles about him. He was always photographed on the news in his underwear laying around like an open pervert. And, and, and looking like the archetypal pervert you'd run from in the park, uh, and, you know, in sickening jogging shorts. I mean, they love to just throw it in our face now. And I, you know, it, it always freaks me out when you say that about Bush. And then I just, um, I just look at George W. Bush and he looks like a little piggy toothed, you know, Sandusky type. I just, I just, I don't even know what to do at this point. I mean, these people, why are, how are you still alive if this is accurate? Well, maybe there are forces at work that's more powerful than they are. <laughs> yeah, maybe, that's it. maybe we're in a period now where, where uh, this is coming to the surface because, um, you know, it's time for the, the, the boil to be lanced. And when you boil a, a lance of boil, then the, for a start, it's not very pleasant because all the poison comes to the surface where you can see it, but it's the first stage of healing. Uh, and, and we, first of all, as a human race, I've got to come to terms with the situation we're in, and we've got to come to terms with the nature of the evil that uh, is um, 
manipulating our world and manipulating our lives. And if we think it's bad now, well, think what kind of world our children and grandchildren are going to live in. Come on, we can do this. There's 7 billion of us. There's a handful of them. They do it through secrecy and they do it through having uh, their people recruited from the target population and they put them into positions of power in uniforms and dark suits. Most of them haven't got a clue of the big picture. They just do as they're told and they're, you know, because it suits them. Those people need to start breaking ranks. There are some of them that, that never will because they're, you know, they're so bloody uh, asleep and, 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 you know, evil themselves. But th there are vast numbers of people in this system who are daily creating a nightmare world for their children and grandchildren, indeed for themselves. I mean, this is not some time over the rainbow anymore, who haven't really got a clue um, what uh, that they're actually doing. <laughs> Listen, ignorance is no longer an excuse because the information is there. Now, if you want to look the other way, that's a choice. But don't tell me you didn't know because it's there. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to go on uh, working <laughs> and doing what your buddy told within it so that these people we're talking about today, this level of unspeakable evil goes on creating an ever greater nightmare for the human family. Are you going to still do that or are you going to say enough? You're going to look your children and grandchildren in the eyes and say enough. I'm not doing this anymore. And if I'm going to stay in, in this job, I am going to do it uh, for the benefit of humanity and not for the benefit of that evil which seeks to enslave humanity. Same with you in uniform, by the way. You guys, you troops, you're fighting and killing others in f overseas wars with your computer games at the Creech Air Force Base in bloody Nevada and, 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 and uh, in uh, Libya and, and, and Iraq and, and Afghanistan, killing and being killed. You are doing it for the very people I am talking about today. You're right. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, I was just thinking when you talked about these royal bloodlines. Thank you, know. Uh, David, we know that Joseph Mengele came from a royal German bloodline and was protected uh, by uh, the U.S. government and allowed to leave. And he would take, on record, children out every week and give them chocolates, driving them out in a Mercedes with the SS, and then would get out with a Luger and shoot four or five of them at a time uh, with the gun. I mean, and, and then you were talking about your reports of that other individual uh, doing similar things. I mean, it, it, but but we, we're like, that's crazy. But every culture, the elites, I mean, some of the Transylvanian royalty, some of the women bathe in the blood of babies. That's that's mainline history. I mean, these are just, these people, you could say they're inbred, and so they've got inbred psychopaths, so it makes a total sadist demon, or you could say they're possessed. Whatever it is, that's what they are. And, well, the, yeah. The, the, the ones that are real big-time bloodline, they absolutely are. The, the former and then there are others that get, that get possessed to other latter but the you know the Rothschilds and the royals and all these people they're absolutely the former they are genetically evil because of the bloodline and the information field uh which is dictating their sense of perception uh, uh and and reality and uh it's uh, something to come to terms with but we need to come to terms with it we need to get out of denial and start to recognize what we're dealing with and and then we can have the, the information on which we can do something about it once we know uh, what we're dealing with. Because if we don't know what we're dealing with, then there's no way that we can do anything about it, obviously, because we don't know what to do because we don't know what we're dealing with. Interesting, Alex, what you said about Mengele. Uh, Mengele was, was brought to America, South America and, and the United States uh, at the end of the war through Operation uh, Paperclip. Uh, pa but I've talked to people, I've talked to a, a, a quite a number of people in America over the years um, who, who were tortured by him. Um, he operated in the United States with full knowledge of the authorities because uh, the, the bloodline network in Germany under the Nazis and the bloodline network in uh, uh, America under the Rockefellers, etc. Same network, just a different uh, you know, location. So when, when they, they brought these people from uh, Germany after the war, the Nazis and stuff, to America, they were mates. They were, they were part of the same deal, part of the same uh, whole agenda. And he operated Mengele in America under the name Dr. Green. And uh, he uh, tortured uh, children. He made them fa uh, witness the sacrifice of animals. What they do um, and is they make them 
experience their worst nightmares and it breaks up the mind into compartments which they can then use. They call them alters. Tra Trauma-based mind control. We're going to have to get you back on about this, David. Uh, very uh, powerful information. I'm glad you're having this big Wimbledon event, davidike.com. Uh, everybody needs to support that. And uh, I'm told it's going well. I'm told a lot of people are coming. A lot of people are coming, yeah. And um, I want to make it uh, a focus uh, to, to take the information and connect the dots to the point where the bigger picture is actually uh, seen, within which what we experience with our conscious minds every day can be put in a totally <laughs> new perspective. And, and it's like this, Alex, you know. If, if you're um, in a movie theater and you want to change the movie on the screen, it's no good shouting at the screen. You've got to find out where the movie's being projected from and change it there. And, th and then what's being reflected on the screen will change, i.e. our world will change. And, and it's going into these deep, deep levels of um, in the rabbit hole where you finally start to access where it's coming from. And if we can stop it there, then the projection stops, everything changes. And, exactly, and exactly. And there's 7 billion of us. How many globalists? Rothkopf said there's 6,000 superclass minions of 20 families. And, and he's the head of the Kissinger Group, or was. He thought I was the other Alex S. Jones and came on like four or five years ago and, and still did the interview and was trying to convince me how great world government was, but 6,000 minions, 20 families, I mean, we can beat them. Yeah, this is, why, this is why they've had to work so hard to divide and rule the target population. They've done it by get, uh, playing religions off against each other, political persuasions off against each other, races off against each other, uh, countries off against each other, cultures off against each other, even football teams off against each other in places like Europe, uh, football fans uh, off against each other. Anything that can divide and rule the target population is more, good. More compartmentalization. David Icke.com. David, we're going to play a video here uh, um, uh, before we go back and then and come back with uh, Gerald Salente, folks. It's the 24 hour, 48 hour InfoWars, MoneyBomb.com. Uh, transmission. Please donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com if you think this type of information is important. If you realize how rare it is to even have a forum, period, to cover this, much less this big. Uh, and the courage that David Icke and, and, and my crew and everybody else has, please donate. Please support us. InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com so we can build a bigger and more powerful uh, weapon system uh, to fire the truth uh, at the enemy. Uh, David Icke, look forward to watching your event and then having you on in the aftermath. After it, I'd like to talk to you uh, uh, here while this video plays uh, and uh, talk to you about uh, uh, just one item. But but thank you so much for your courage, David. And uh, we're the world is a much better place because you're in it. Well, that's very kind of you, mate. You just do your best, and tomorrow you do your best even more. That's all you can do, and then what happens, happens. But um, come on, we can do this. We can, and, and we've got to be all in. The enemy is all in. We've got to be all in. Okay, we're going to be back in about 10 minutes with Gerald Salente, uh, and that's David Icke of davidike.com. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. Once a year, please support it. Be part of history. Uh, you know, that, you know, that small action together can move mountains to help us get the uh, TV show uh, out there on the uh, cable and uh, other systems, satellite systems. We'll be right back with Gerald Salente. It's the 48-hour transmission. Uh, David Icke was just our guest for an amazing uh, hour and 40-minute-plus uh, uh, interview. We'll be right back. Ten cents for some lemonade, guys. Two more? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for your...